Hi Julie Watts here, welcome to my YouTube channel and um, today we're going to do project number two uh, using Valerie's Pansy. There is another video, another two videos actually using uh, this stamp set and it's one of the flare fairies from Fairy Hugs. Um, I'm working my way through all the 22 of the flare fairies. Um, I've done some videos and I've done some that are just cards, I haven't actually done them but you can check on my uh, Julia Watts Crafts Facebook page um, and you can find uh, an album containing my samples using the Flower Fairies. You can also visit my website juliawattscrafts.co.uk and um, um, in the main menu there's a fairy hook section you can do the little drop down icon and you can see where the Flower Fairies can be found and against each of the Flower Fairies you'll find the samples from myself and there's some from the design team on there as well. Um, you can also find Fairy Hug stamps at fairyhugs.com for worldwide shipping. So let's crack on and uh, let's make something. So I thought it might be quite interesting to um, just use a couple of the elements from the set. And we're going to really focus on this small uh, pansy down here. So to start off, I've actually pulled uh, a paper out of the new Fairy Hugs pollen wing paper pad. Uh, this is was launched in January 2023. Uh, it's one of their six by six paper pads. There's 24 double sided sheets, tw tw 24 designs, two sheets of each. Now 216 GSM. Um, and so just a quick flick, you can see that you've got um, kind of scenes with um, uh, ground on them, and you've got other areas that are just um, you know like a background for you to start at. Um, there's some quite, I, I would say they're quite, some of them are quite contemporary, um, but they're a really good start. Um, they're kind of semi-coated, which means that your ink works really well on them. Um, and so it makes uh, life really, really easy and obviously six by six, but obviously you can cut them down. And uh, I do have them in stock on my website. So I've actually trimmed it down to five by five because we're going to... Um, in fact, I didn't need to. I was using my mama mates for tape mate, uh, and I've got a little kind of this is my plan. And I would suggest you do this rather than taking it directly to um, at one of your papers, which you don't want to ruin. Uh, do a bit of a plan. It doesn't matter what your stamping's like. See, I've missed a bit. It doesn't really matter. But you're guessing how you want things. So do I want some butterflies around the outside or do I want to fill in with some extra pansies? You know, I, I haven't made my mind up yet, but but that's that's the um, possibility. But because actually, I think I'm not going to go for the butterflies. I'm going to fill in with the pansy. So I'm actually dealing with quarters, and because I'm dealing with quarters, you can actually just do it using your stamping platform. You don't have to bring in the rotate mate. If you were doing um, say uh, eight, so um, putting an image in here and here and here and here, then it is easier. There's spacing to use your rotate mate. Um, the mama makes but uh, we don't need to but it, it, this is a is a good plan to have so what we'll do is we'll let's show you how i'm going to use this plan we're going to bring in this just piece of copper paper and then we're going to take um, our stamp here in fact what we'll do first is i think we'll do the middle bits first shall we no we won't we, do, we will do the outside I was thinking if I do the middle bit, then I won't have to worry about the ink so much, but it's all right, we'll wipe it off. So I'm going to just place my pansy roughly over where I had it before, because that's where I know I want my spacing to be. And then we're going to pick it up. Then we're going to get rid of that, and we're going to bring in the paper that I'm going to actually use, which is this one. And it's got it's got kind of like a little um, sort of netted texture to it, which is really interesting. We could use that one, or we could use a lighter one. Oh, decisions, decisions. Okay, which one to use? Now let's use the darker one because I'd intended it. But, but of course, you've got two sheets of each one, so it does mean that you can change your mind and you can um, use a different one if you want to. As this is like this, let's go for Chianti uh, rather than the purple because I think this Chianti is going to really uh, work really nicely with this particular um, colour background. Obviously you could just go black if you wanted to. 
And the first one clays are excellent to use with these kind of stamps. I have just used the monarch with it, so I don't know, it might change colour and by the time we finish. So give it a good old press. in and lift it up okay so there's, there's number one I'm going to do the four corners so you can fast forward this bit if you want to if you don't want to watch me do four corners rather than just in, um, pause it I thought I'd show you because some people find it quite relaxing just to have videos in the background See how it builds up. So this is corner number three. Just proving today that I can count. It's a lovely. It's it's almost like a. It, it, it looks like it's in the purple family. This one, this Chianti. will find all the best fine clays on my website. If I'm out of stock of anything, you just click on the email when available button and uh, you'll be notified as soon as it comes back in stock. I do try and keep the majority of the fairy hook stamps in stock and also the best fine clays. So obviously I want something to fill in the gap there and we did, I did have a go, I did think I might want to use a trailer butterflies but I, I'm actually thinking that just putting another pansy head will make it nice and, and complete. So we can use the one that's on there or we can use this one, actually I think I do prefer the one it, that's, that we're actually using there so let's use that. And so we don't make a mess, let's grab a piece of acetate, must have some wet, let me just grab one. Obviously with these, the acetate's big, but you can just use a piece of acetate out of one of your smaller sets just to get the positioning. Obviously I could bring this in and I could use this, but you know, once you're going, you might as well just stick with what you know. So we know that that is gonna go perhaps in between there. Like all that, that'll be good. that and what I've got is I've just taken a little bit of um, low tat tape this is um, scotch low, low tat tape I've lost my dispenser it's somewhere in my boxes and uh, you can see I've already been using it so you can use it a few times so I tend to ink it first using the same color let's have some more magnets Because obviously I've gone over the edge and I've made a mess. Let's tidy up. We can take this and that's all I see. And we can just go over with the tape and hide that area. I've got an extra little bit of tape here because obviously I've only just inked and there might be a little bit of ink down there. And then we can stamp. So we're only going to stamp the areas where the tape isn't. Okay, so there's our little 
pansy. There's, there's a tiny little bit extra there. It doesn't matter. I pointed it out to you, but you probably wouldn't notice it. Then obviously you're going to turn it and you're going to do this four times as well because you're going to fill in the gaps to make a nice frame. So one key, key thing to remember is to take your tape off first to one side and then ink again and then you can put the tape on again. If you need to um, stamp again because you've not stamped very well, remember, take the tape off, re-ink, put the tape back on again and then re-stamp. You'll forget. At some point, you will definitely forget. We've all done it. That's why sometimes practising is a good idea. So that your mistakes hopefully come out in your practice run. I mean, obviously, you could fill in other things in the gap. You, you've got bees. You could actually... Um, just add in another one of these but then you'd just be overlapping a little bit you know but if you went down to a smaller area to four by four then these corners are going to be closer so you might like that or if you adjust the angle slightly um it will, it will always be different so we turned it take off our bit of tape re -ink. Or you might find that you want to use a bigger area, so you want to say five and a half by five and a half rather than five by five. As I said, I was using the Rotate Mate, um, and the, the, the largest you can go is five by five. So that's why I've trimmed it. But you know, you kind of work these things out as you're going along. And then we just pop that. So you should be able to do all four of these with the same pieces of tape and then obviously you just bin it. Okay. So one more and then we've got our little frame. Now it's up to you whether you colour it in. I might, but I just want to really show you the stamping. If I end up colouring it in, you'll see the coloured in version at the start of the video in what, what uh, YouTube call the thumbnail. And obviously when I share it on social media and pop it into the album on my Facebook page, you will see it coming in. I might just add a little bit of something to the face. Sometimes pansies have a different colour at the top to the bottom, or sometimes it's just that the what they call the beard um, is, is a different colour. So... It doesn't matter, it's, it's stamped. You don't have to actually know what pansies are supposed to look like. You can do them however you want. That's the beauty of doing some, of stamping something. You do whatever you want. If you want to have, you know, lime green in the middle, you can absolutely do that. Okay, so there's all of our bits and pieces. Let's get rid of that. I stick it anywhere and clean up that mess before I stick my fingers in it. Okay, so there's our kind of frame. I mean, you could come in here now, I'm going off at tangents, as you do. You look at something and you think, oh, okay. you could also bring in we've got them you could bring in some butterflies bear with me if you get bored like I say you can fast forward you might want another magnet or two for this one and do you want to have a different colour I don't know if I do what colours there are there? Let's go for uh, another purple and we'll go for Purple Delight. So we've got that one there and it being exactly the same place. Same place. Yeah. Let's 
it's not difficult is it it's really easy this sort of stamping is is um quite i find quite therapeutic because you don't have to think about it it's just all about patterns i'm not i'm just like keeping it really simple really easy and let's see how that looks as to whether i want to add any more i like my lines on my paper to be that way so that's how it will sit i quite like that do i want to add an extra butterfly i don't know so you, you'd actually take your acetate i think hmm. yeah let's add an extra butterfly yes you can right so bring in that scrappy piece of acetate so we're going to have a butterfly about there Clean that just in case. Pick it up, get rid of the acetate, bring in some magnets, and we'll repeat again. Pull to light again. I'm not trying to be symmetrical. If I wanted to be exact, I'd use my rotate mate, but in this instance, I'm not. I'm just using the stamping platform. I must get some more stamping platforms because I haven't got any stock at the moment. to get carried away with this sort of stamping you can go on forever you could bring the bees in rather than butterflies but these are all from the same set they're great value because you can do all your scene building the only thing you might want to bring in is a sentiment um, but of course that's optional you don't have to bring in sentiments either let's bring in Valerie I say I like to have my let's have the dark, lighter area at the top actually and I like to have my lines going that way then they are rectangular rather than um, square. Put all my four magnets on, and then we'll bring in. We check. I did check she fitted, so she's going to be flying that way. So yes, it won't be a sentiment on this one. Make sure that's butted into the corner, and. So we've used Chianti and Purple Violet. Uh, let's keep in the theme of purples and let's bring in Monarch. So we would have used the three Versafine colours um, for this. Purple so there is another purple called Fantasia. But I think that's, a, that's a more of a blue purple. Well inked. Now none of the none of these stamps I've had to do a second time. They've all stamped beautifully on this paper. That's the quality of the stamp, nice juicy ink pads, and the quality of the paper. And just taking my time rather than rushing. Colour, but I might not. I actually quite like it in the monotone, but uh, you, you'll, you'll see something different. So I just mat it onto a piece of black card. I might go around the edges um, with perhaps some sort of water taffy, um, distress oxide, but uh, I think that's made a really lovely card, don't you? <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so don't forget the, the paper is from the Pollen Wing. Uh, paper pad and then it's Valerie's Pansy and the three different uh, Versafine clays. Really easy to do, just take your time, relax 
um, and you'll find all the products used on my website juliawattscrafts.co.uk for shipping to UK addresses and um, uh, outside the UK you'll find the fairy hog stamps and papers at fairyhogs.com and um, just uh, thank you so much for watching and do make sure that you catch my other videos there's two more with Valerie's Pansy and uh, lots and lots of other videos on my YouTube channel so thank you so much for watching bye for now